Hey, I'm Alexander Hyacinth, one of the uh, producers of the ESPN Daily Podcast, and I'm here today with Justin Tinsley, the man of Anscape, writer, legend in the flesh himself, and uh, <laughs> the reason that we're here is uh, ESPN Daily's been nominated for a Webby Award um, for the Best Individual Podcast Episode. Last summer, we uh, did a special about Satchel Paige, the legend himself, um, yeah. kind of going through his 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 myth, his legend, um, ahead of the 75th anniversary of him making his Major League debut. Um, Justin was good enough to host it, so I'll, I'll, I'll throw to you, Justin, how you doing? And, uh, you know, what do you think of uh, this episode that we put out and are being so honored for? First and foremost, man, it's just, it's an honor to be recognized for it. Because, you know, to be recognized for like an individual episode, that means somebody had to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, hey, this is pretty cool. I learned a lot from this. And uh, secondly, I got to shout you out, man, because you were the one that called me about this and asked me, was I interested? And because you know the type of stories that I like to tell, you know what my quote unquote wheelhouse is. And I said, hell yeah, absolutely. And the crazy thing about this episode is, is like, I, I thought I knew so much about Satchel Page, And I was excited to go into those conversations that we had with people. But like when I went back and listened to it, when it first came out last summer, I was like, oh, that's that was a good episode. But then I went back and listened to it again, maybe four or five months later, later, excuse me. And I was like, wow, like I learned so much from just talking to the people that we talked to. And I like to believe that somebody else got that feeling of like, wow, like I knew about Satchel Page, but I didn't know that about Satchel Page. Right. That, he's got one of those names that like you, you, yeah. you have to grow up on Mars to not know or to not have heard <laughs> of. And like, you know, that's right in my lane. Um, anytime that we can do something that kind of like coalesces around baseball and yeah, I'll be frank for obvious reasons, Negro League Baseball, man, it's, it's, Hell yeah. it's just a real big part of my foundation. And like you said, I know I knew you were the one I wanted to come to with this off rip because a, like, that is in your, your wheelhouse in terms of kind of like how you digest and share stories. But even more than that, you, you're really good at kind of like, gratitude's not the right word, expressing wonder as you're learning things. Um, yeah. Let me ask you, was, was there something that stood out to you from the episode um, as we did it, as you went back and listened to it, that you were really excited to kind of learn about Satchel? Yeah, you know, that, that's a great question, man, because I always knew about the Satchel Page Josh Gibson, you know what I mean, head-to-head -head matchups, you know what I'm saying? But, like, the way that it was told in the episode, it felt like, you know, I was driving, so I couldn't, like, close my eyes and, like, listen to, you know, listen to the story. But, like, as I was driving, I was like, wow, like, in my head, I can picture this matchup because in sports, we love a great, uh, uh, you know, irresistible force and an, an immovable object, you know, and that was the epitome of what that matchup was. And just going back and listening to that episode, that part really, it, it, it gave me chills because it was like those guys were alive again. And that's what it felt like to me. And that's a really good kind of uh, opportunity to segue into some of the people we had, because the guy that told yep. us the story about Josh Gibson and Satchel Page, Bob Kendrick, who's the president of the Negro League Baseball Museum down in Kansas City. And like Bob is like the best natural storyteller I think I've ever come across. Um, I had an yeah. opportunity to work with him on a, a Jackie Robinson episode we did a couple years ago. And he just captivates you with his voice and the way he told that story. I know a lot of people have probably heard this story about Satchel calling in the outfielders and having everybody sit down and striking out Josh Gibson with three pitches and <laughs> just hearing it from Bob was crazy. Um, besides Bob Kendrick, we spoke with Sean Gibson, who's the great grandson yep. of Josh Gibson, uh, the aforementioned Negro League Hall of Famer. Damian yeah. Thomas, who's a sports curator at the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and Justice yep. B. Hill, one of your um, cohorts over on the Anscape side. Um, yep. What do you remember about kind of talking to them as, as we went through uh, the process of putting the episode together? Dude, the fact that we spoke to 
Kendrick and the fact that we spoke to Sean Gibson and really speaking to him, it was like, well, we're speaking to baseball royalty right here. We're speaking to two guys who like really changed the course of the game of baseball. And they have so many urban legends and tall tales about them just to speak to somebody who was directly related to them and then speak to somebody who wants to keep that, that legacy alive to me. That was powerful. And to hear him speak about his grandfather and, you know, these feats that he had on the baseball field and why it's important for him to speak his grandfather's name into power, even in 20, at that point, 2023 and now 2024, to me, like to just hear from like the descendants of, you know, a guy who quite literally changed the game of baseball, that was that was the main reason why I was like, hell yeah, let's do this episode. Because I knew it was going to take us somewhere that even I couldn't uh, fathom. The guy for me, and they were all great, obviously. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know the Twitter account, Accidental Bronson, where it's just yep. like descriptions yep. of things? I, I call Justice B. Hill Accidental Bars, bro. <laughs> because like the way dude like just turned a phrase. I think he said something pretty early up in the episode, if you want to go back and check it out, uh, out there in the audience. He said Satchel Page had been to more cities than the railroad. And and that just was like <laughs> that was straight bars. It was silky yeah, that smooth. Was, that was a bar right there. <laughs> that was a bar right there. Yeah. I, there's no denying that. That was a bar, for sure. Uh the thing that jumps out to me here is it's it's such a huge honor being nab- nominated for a Webby. Um and it, it it it's even more of an honor when you realize that it wasn't for like best sports podcast it was for best individual podcast episode like yeah it's like getting a song of the year nomination um what how does that make you feel just knowing that the work that we put together kind of got that sort of recognition man again we were talking about a little bit earlier but this is a perfect time to like dive into it um when you say best individual episode or however you want to you know frame it it's like you had to not just like skim the episode you had to actually listen to that episode and take something from that episode to be like, hey, we need to put this in this category for X amount of reasons. So to know that we're associated with something that people deem that high of an honor, to me, that makes me feel good. But that also makes me feel even better because these are the stories in black history that dirt deserve to be preserved. You know what I'm saying? And to know that we had a very, very small part in Satchel Paige's legacy, his his legacy living on throughout another generation, bro, man, you can't even you can't even really put that into words because neither one of us saw Satchel Paige pitch. Nah. We just know the stories about him and we connected to him that much. So to know that we're we're part of that story now, even if we're just a star in this massive universe that is Satchel Paige. I couldn't be more honored if I tried, bro. The opportunity to hear his voice was something that was really special to me Ooh. because you said yeah. it yourself in the episode that his name is like Paul Bunyan or or, or, yeah. or John Henry. But you forget that like this man was alive well into the 70s. Like we didn't just miss him, but like, you know, the decade before us, he was out there. Mm-hmm. And so to like hear him talking post game when he's pitching basically in like a traveling circuit in Florida or to see him make appearances on variety shows and late shows. Like this was a guy who literally was born the generation, two generations after slavery ended, who pitched before integration, who somehow broke through beyond just being black famous into like the mainstream consciousness and collective. And that's just like, it's just remarkable. It's, it's a remarkable commentary on his talent and his, his swag for lack of a better word, you know? For sure, man. And, like, you hit the nail on the head when you started mentioning, like, everything that he experienced, not just as a baseball player, but just as a black man growing up in America through different points in this story's history. So it's not just a baseball story. And, you know, this guy from the Negro Leagues just got to to the major leagues. You got to encompass literally everything else that's going on in the world at this point and what this black man is having to survive you know, you know, you, you know, internalize whatever the case may be. Like these things are going on. He's out here accomplishing these things 
on the field, which just makes that that that's why people look at him as a superhero. That's why people look at him as as again this Paul Bunyan, John Henry type. Like this dude couldn't have really existed. You honestly, you know, I was thinking about this earlier, even before we jumped on here, right? He's kind of like imagine if Victor Wimbiana had been around before social media and you couldn't have seen him. You're like, nah, there's no way this dude is doing this. Like, Satchel Page is the original Wimby. I guess if you want to say that. You know, there's no way, like, this dude did this. And then he played, you know, we, we have no clue how old he was when he retired. We right. think we know. Right. You know what I mean? So that keeps the legend going even more. So <laughs> it's, it's just an honor to be associated with that, man. You can see how excited I'm getting just by talking about it. But it, it's that, that dude is... A legend and then some. One of the really cool things is um, this episode or, or this this featurette we're doing here is going to hit the ESPN uh, baseball YouTube page on Jackie Robinson Day, um, continuing that legacy, you know, linking that legacy of, yeah. of breaking the color barrier and of the civil rights struggle and of the Negro Leagues and all that kind of history. Um, ESPN Daily has an episode out uh Today, if you're listening on, on Monday, or if you're watching on Monday, rather, that uh, examines this uh, this statue in Wichita, Kansas, uh, of Jackie Robinson that was literally cut down and stolen from in front yeah. of a youth baseball field, and yeah. it's um it's these kind of things that we you know want to bring awareness to and mm-hmm. telling stories about legends like Satchel and kind of just putting into context their place in history you know, can hopefully bridge the gap, especially when you're talking about America's pastime, man. Like, I know mm-hmm. baseball's kind of gone through its its ebbs and flows and, and has a lot going on off the field right now, but, like, this to me is still the sport with the deepest legacy and connection to kind of everybody's experience here in this country. Absolutely, man. Baseball is directly tied to, you know, American history, as you just said. Like, whether we're talking about who's ever experienced in this country and in particular black people. And, you know, this is what Jackie Robinson represents. Like when we think about it, man, 1947 isn't that long ago. Right. You know, it's not that long ago. My, my grandmother was born in 1931. You know, she's about to turn 93. And I remember my grandmother telling me stories about like how, you know, during certain moments, all the men in the neighborhood would come over the house and sit around the radio and listen to like Joe Lewis fight. And then, you know, she remembers the day when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. Like there are people still alive who experienced that. So this is very real history. And to know that like, you know, we're still doing episodes on a Jackie Robinson statue being defaced or stolen. Like that lets you know how in, important that story actually is bro like because the same things that he had to fight through to just even get on the field these things are still going on like we're not just making this stuff up out of thin air like these things are actually happening so this is why the jackie robinson episode as you just talked about is important and this is why this satchel page episode is equally as important so that's why we're here so at the end here, there's a couple URLs that are going to be going up. They, they'll probably be up and live by the time this posts. Um, one is VoteESPNDaily.com. One is Vote30for30.com. And one is VoteLeadByExample.com. You'll be able to check out this episode. Other great content coming out of uh, from underneath the ESPN umbrella, the Disney umbrella. And um, yeah, like whatever support feels right to give, we would love to have it. Being nominated in and of itself is just a huge honor. There's a, it's not just me on the production staff. There's a whole team behind me. It's not just voices like Justin leading the charge with us on, on ESPN Daily. Clinton Yates, our, our host, is doing a bang up job day in, day out, just um, making sure that we're staying on top of, you know, not just what's hot, but what's what's interesting. We hope that when you tune into an episode of ESPN Daily, you get an opportunity to come away as a little bit smarter, exposed to something that maybe you might not have thought of before. What do you got coming down the pipeline, Justin? Man, so, you know, I'm working on some stories, hopefully some that come out around like the start of the NBA playoffs, which is honestly about to start in a few days. So right. Been working on uh, a Jalen Brunson story that I'm really excited about, and uh, hopefully you'll read it later this week. 
Well, that's it for me. I'm Alexander Hyacinth, the producer at ESPN Daily. This is Justin Tinsley, the voice of Anscape, and just a lot more than that. You see that biggie book behind him? Get out there and cop that. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you to the Webbies. We're super excited to have been nominated uh, for Best Individual Podcast episode in 2023. And we look forward to bringing you guys more content down the line.